Okay, we're in we're in Sag Harbor, New York. It's November seventeenth, two thousand and twelve, and this is a discussion about the Jacobson family. And uh, uh, Dave and Dad will introduce themselves and then uh, just talk about what happened. Since I'm the oldest, I'll introduce myself. I'm Arvid Trevor Jacobson. Born in 1930 in Astoria, Oregon, of Arvid Jacobson from Sea Lake, Australia. And I'm David Andrew Weaver, Jr. Uh, uh, with my mother being Elsie Elvira Jacobson Weaver. And married to David Andrew Weaver in... Oh, I'm confused here as to whether it's 1930 or 1931, in August, in, married in Astoria, Oregon. And uh, currently I live in Bloomfield, Connecticut for the last 40 years with my wife, Anne, A-N-N-E. And uh, we have two sons, Richard, who's now 49, and Dan, who's 45. Uh, so... Uh, so with respect to um, Arvid, Edith, and Elsie, uh, what happened there? Oh, I can never uh, tell the story without getting choked up, but uh, they were all born to our uh, grandparents, Carl and Louise uh, Jakobson, in Sea Lake, Australia, in the very early 1900s. Two brothers, the Jacobson brothers, had uh, emigrated from Sweden, and then one of them, our grandfather, had gone back a couple years later and uh, found his bride in Sweden, or Nykarlaby, which is Swedish-speaking Finland, and brought her back to the where they had homesteaded in Sea Lake and did wheat farming. And Arvid was born in 1900, Elsie was born, as far as I know, in 1902, and Edith was born in 1904. And uh, by 1909, the second parent had died. I think uh, Louise had died first of consumption, which is tuberculosis. And in 1909, the father died. And uh, sisters of the Louise had emigrated to the lower Columbia in the Astoria area. and. Uh, one of the youngest sisters had just married uh, a Swede named Charles Sherston. How I did how did how did uh, great grandpa die? Of consumption, also. And wasn't there wasn't there a, a story about the children having to stand across the backyard from him, where while well, he lived in a shed or something, to talk to him so they wouldn't get um, catch it? Uh, the sick person with tuberculosis lived in a tent outside, and yes, they had to visit through the, through the open air or through the side of a tent. But uh, I don't know any, obviously, any first-hand details of that, but uh, most of my recollection comes second-hand. Are there any videos of them talking to great-grandpa? Well, you can figure out that. Look to, to see when videos are copyrighted and uh, think back to 1909. Okay, and Here's then something, David. And, I have uh, what you're telling me is new information, so I haven't heard this part of the story. Okay, I, I'll go on then. Uh, in 1909, a cable was sent from, uh, I think, Melbourne, but anyhow, from Australia to Astoria. It reached the new bridegroom, maybe two years after they were married, but they didn't have any children. And the cable simply said, The children are now orphaned. Will you take them? Uh, meaning intended for his bride and to discuss with her husband, obviously. And uh, she had left town to go either across the river or to Portland. Carl remembers the story as being had gone to Portland, and I remember the story as having gone across the river to see another sister and wouldn't be back for some time. Well, but at any rate. So there's a conflict in information there? Yeah. And between you and Carl, who's typically right? Carl, always. Okay. He's got a memory. But at any rate, 
since I'll, I'm going to tell my version, uh, Charlie Shurston cabled back immediately, send the children. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I choke up every time I say that. Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of staggering. So the three of them were put on a ship with a governess and shipped to... Uh, I've actually seen their landing documents where they were signed in to uh, British, in a British Columbia port, Vancouver, British Columbia. And what was their port of departure? I would imagine Melbourne. I think that document said that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I saw it only on Ancestry.com. I don't have a copy of it. And uh, apparently somebody from Astoria went up to meet them, I assume the Shurstons. But uh, interestingly, the name Jacobson was spelled J-A-K-O-B-S-E-N, I believe, at that time. But when they you find the family tree in Sweden, or in Finland, you find that the family name was Sund. So, uh, that's the story as I have it. And that's more information than I have. So, mine is uh, uh, not accurate, so I'm not going to say what I uh, understand, but, because... Uh, I yield here to uh, what Trevor is well, saying. Well, don't, because if you heard something through well, your family, no, 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 it might no. be just as accurate. Well, what, what I'm saying is that you're talking about cablegram, and I've always thought it was telephone, <laughs> which obviously may be uh, you know, definitely inaccurate. Inter so uh, that's why I'm, I'm, uh, I just know there was communication, and so I made an assumption, and uh, obviously... Uh, Cable would be more accurate at that point in time. So do we need to go back and track down the people that you have told it was a telephone call versus a cablegram and give them the corrected information? No. <laughs> I would never claim the corrected information, particularly, if, uh, particularly from the Jacobson side of the family. <laughs> so I would never uh, uh, have that perception. <laughs> but why don't you elaborate on what your family's understanding of that period was. Elsie was two years younger than Dad, right? so uh, she, but she was old enough to have some memory. She was minimum of uh, seven at the time. Right, but uh, for me, that piece of the, that piece never got communicated uh, oh. as from my mom. So uh, there's a part of me that feels uh, uh, necessarily uh, leaning on whatever Jacobson side says, because uh, my mother never gave me uh, any clue as to that part of her life. Uh, for me, my mom was born when she went to Oregon State. I don't have any sense of what it was for her to live in Astoria. And uh, so I feel uh, cheated in that regard, but that's the way it was. So I keep leaning to the Jacobsons to provide me with what they know about uh, the Jacobsons from the time that, uh, even to the Finland fin fin place. I mean, I, I can tell that story from Finland to Australia, but I didn't even know there were two uh, Jacobson brothers. I mean, that, what he just said is new information to me. I just know about my grandfather. Yeah, and Carl will be a much better source because he went back with Dad. When Dad was 75, they went back and visited the old area and uh, got in touch with the next-door neighbor who was still farming that Dad had grown up with or gone to school for the first several years. So that would have been about 47 years ago. No. That would have been 1975. Oh, I'm sorry. So 37 years ago? You do the math, but uh, 37. Carl traveled with him for several weeks in Australia and undoubtedly got a lot of information that was not provided otherwise because they had an opportunity and they had, uh, he was obviously reminiscing with his old friend and they were doing sightseeing all around the area. So I'm sure a lot would have come out to Carl that uh, 
I wouldn't have, and obviously David wouldn't have. Did Grandpa Jacobson have a motorcycle? Not that I know of. He had a... Uh, he, there were some old movies of him in 1938 when Dave's family was out on the Oregon coast, and they were... Dad was enjoying a motor scooter, which oh. was undoubtedly rented oh. at the time. Mm -hmm. That's my recollection, is that film. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, that film has some classic pictures of log dumping off of log trucks into Young's Bay and uh, huge fish, and included in it is a picture of a fish box uh, containing one salmon that weighed far more than I did. I was standing next to it, and the salmon obviously weighed more than I did when I was about six or eight years old. <laughs> well, it would have been when I was eight years old because it was 1938, I'm quite sure. So let's go through um, <clears throat> Grandpa and um, Elsie and Edith's uh, progeny, not so much grandchildren, but uh, just children. Arvid had four children. Carl, born August 20... Carl, Rob, uh, Carl Watts Jacobson, born August... 29, August 5, 1929. Arvid Trevor, me, born August 21, 1930. And Walter, born December 3, 1932. And uh, Ed, born February 1, 1945. And as the son of Elsie uh, Elvira Weaver, uh, Elvira Jacobson Weaver, uh, I was born on February 19, 1935. Uh, and my brother, Walter William Weaver, was born March 6, 1940. And as far as Edith's kids? Oh, Edith had uh, married Franz Wopio, F-R-A-N-S, Z? Z. And, uh, I thought. Yeah, I'm not sure of the way Franz was spelled. And they had uh, the son, Richard Wopio, and he's a year younger than Walt. I have, do not know his uh, birth date. Can you get back to us with the birth date? And I'd like to actually include the time of day that they were born also. So, okay. So that's Richard. You stand a good chance in, you know what, of finding out that information. Uh, now Carl will have it. And there's a younger brother of Richard was... He, Donald? He, Donald. Donald. Donald was, I think, two years younger, and he died very early, I think before he was 30, of uh, tongue cancer. And I think he was, he was married... Uh, to a sweet lady, and I think he was only 27 or 28. Do you remember? No. I don't know, but you were right that it was young. Absolutely. And uh, I'm going to go on and say that uh, I, uh, Carl was a lifelong bachelor. Uh, I married Joyce Diane Carter on August, I'm sorry, May 1st, 1954, one day before her 21st birthday. I thought it was the day after. One day, one day after her, May August, second. yes, I'm sorry. Her second. birthday was May 1st. We got married on May 2nd, and, uh, 1954. And uh, we had three children. Stephen was born in Germany when I was in the Army, and... Joyce was with me, and uh, the hospital city in uh, Germany, its name is escaping me at the moment. Zweibrücken. No, we lived in Zweibrücken, and we were at the, uh, what is now a very famous Air Force hospital. Lonstuhl. La okay. Well, it does we'll accept that. Okay. Doug was born in Portland after we got out of the service in 1960 on June 16th, and Diane was born in Down Downey, California on December 15th, 1962. 
And have any of um, have any of your children spent time in prison or mental institutions? Uh, they haven't told me about it. If they have, uh, Dave, you want to talk about your kids? Uh, I married Ann Molyneux Weaver uh, on Saturday, Flag Day, June Fourteenth, nineteen fifty-eight, and have two sons. Richard Andrew Weaver, who was born February no. February twenty fifth, nineteen sixty three, and Daniel Roy Weaver was born March twenty sixth, nineteen sixty seven. Uh, Richard was born in Boston, Massachusetts. Dan was born in Cambridge, Massachusetts, across the river from Boston. Uh, we lived in the Boston area uh, from, the, from our marriage, 1958, until uh, 1972, when we moved to Bloomfield, Connecticut, where we have now lived for 40 years. So, can you um, fill in regarding the... Um um, um, Edith and Franz's uh, grandkids a little bit. Hmm. Uh, That's a tall order. There's a bunch. I think they have five mm -hmm. total. I'm going to strike out. Okay, let's start with, uh, I think John, no, John's the youngest. Right. Uh, Karen. Karen is the oldest. Yes. She's one one year behind, uh, one day behind Diane as for the first Jacobson girl, as in this her case, Wopio, but the first uh, female in the Jacobson family for 58 years. Uh, John is the youngest. Kirsten? So Kirsten was uh, second or third. And uh, Kathy was in there Second. somewhere. Third, Kirsten, and Kathy, and their son. I can't, it's not Jim, it's uh, John is the youngest son. Right now I can't think of the other son. And, uh, so that is it. Do you have uh, Dick's cell phone number in your phone? No, I, yeah, I might have. Okay, let's give him a call. No, let me first fill you in on uh, my family. Okay. Uh, we raised our kids in Portland, Oregon until 1960, and then we moved to Southern California for until 1969, and at that time, mobile oil was likely to moved me to New York or Kansas City or Dallas, so we decided to move back to the Northwest. So we moved back there in 1969 to Salem, Oregon, where we stayed, raised the kids, and uh, until Joyce died in July of 2000. And uh, after being single for four years, I married Laura Balek, who uh, was a widow down the street that uh, Joyce and I had had known for 20 years, gone to church with him, and she, uh, she and her husband Les gave up a farm and moved on to our street when he got leukemia. Joyce was suffering from multiple myeloma at the time. Uh, Joyce died, as I said, in 2000. Les died in 2000, early 2003. And uh, we just got together and decided to get married in October of 2004. And I've enjoyed that also. I consider myself very lucky to have two beautiful marriages. Did 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 you propose to Laura or did Laura propose to you? <laughs> well, I could keep that confidential, but I'm happy to say I proposed to her and she accepted. Did she accept on the first round or was there a negotiation? On the spot. <laughs> Super. Dave, any more comments? Uh, top that, Dave. Right. <laughs> I want to say that one interesting uh, phenomena in my life
life as a weaver is that my father uh, was engaged to Elsie Elvira Jacobson for one year, and they were separated. They were separated because uh, Elsie had a scholarship from the state of Oregon to the uh, uh, well to attend Columbia University to get her master's degree, and then got engaged to her husband to be. Went back to Pendleton, Oregon, to teach to complete the, the uh, uh, scholarship uh, commitment, and then they were married in Astoria. Anna and I were separated for one year because I was attending Andover Newton Theological School in Newton Center, Massachusetts, while she mooched off her parents in Jersey City, New Jersey, and worked. My older son, Richard, got engaged to a woman who was still attending Brandeis University, and he was separated because he had completed MIT in 1985 took a job with Procter & Gamble in Cincinnati, and he too was separated for one year from his wife-to-be. Uh, interesting phenomenon, but I just share that for what it's worth. Okay. We haven't talked about who married the uh, immigrant uh, kids from Australia, but uh, Arva Jacobson saw a young lady who had been born in Wales and grown up in Beaver Creek, Oregon, that was visiting in Astoria, and she frequently caught the bus right across from the service station that he owned in 1927-28. And he made a point to get across the street to find out a little bit more about this rather cute stranger to town, and uh, they ended up getting married in October of 1928. What kind of service station? Gasoline. Texaco. Well, it was Texaco later on. It was Richfield early on. It was Shell once, and it was <laughs> one other brand also. So I'm not sure of that. But uh, Did the family benefit financially from um, oil stocks? <laughs> I would say no. I did. <laughs> 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 so, my parents, Elsie uh, Elvira Jacobson, met David Andrew Weaver at Columbia University as Elsie was uh, going for a master's degree in home economics to teach, and he was going for a uh, master's degree in ad uh, administration of some sort, I don't think business but uh, ultimately to want to become a uh, university president. Uh, and they had the same class together in, I want to say the f uh, fall of, or spring semester of 1927-28. Uh, hmm. uh, still wrestling with that, but I believe that's the uh, how they met and uh, ultimately got engaged and married in the story, as I previously said. Are mm -hmm. there any questions from the audience? Yes. A little more background on the uh, the offspring, your your brothers and cousins and so on. What what did they do with their lives? Starting with the oldest, Carl. Yes. Heidi, did you have a question as well? We've already been through that, and you can watch the movie, honey. Okay. So you had a question, sir? Yeah, about what did, we, we heard how Carl was, uh, starting with Carl, what did he do for a living, and did you already go through all that? Well, our, actually, our studio time is just about up. Okay. We have to take a commercial break. And uh, we want to thank our audience members and um, our um, family members for this most interesting interview. And thank you for and your support. Yes. Yes. Uh huh. Thank you very much. And.